everybody, this is The Vision. So Goldfinger can be seen as the movie where uh, Sean Connery found his voice and his swagger and his true persona for James Bond. And uh, this is also the first visit to the Q branch. This is, uh, you know, really where the swagger and big posters and of course the, uh, you know, wisecracking jokes started to come into James Bond and he became a slightly bit more of a cartoonish character, but still with the uh, raw masculinity that uh, Sean Connery had. But how good is actually Goldfinger? We shall find out. This is Goldfinger. Goldfinger and James Bond's path are crossed uh, in Florida where Goldfinger is trying to you know, scam some people out of money in you know, crooked card games but uh, James Bond of course stops him and uh, then he, tr he tries to find out more about this guy and what his plans are and he finds out that he's planning to do some kind of an raid against the Fort Knox in Kentucky. Most of this movie actually takes place in Kentucky. Well, we shall see if James Bond is able to use all his gadgets, if he is able to get himself into Pussy Gilroy's pants, and if Old Job is just simply one of the coolest uh, henchmen of all time. Spoiler alert, he is. In short, this is a very fun and very entertaining James Bond film. It has one of some of the most iconic movies in Bond history, the laser interrogation. Odd Jobs hat, which he decapitates a statue with. Um, the presentation of the Grand Slam operations, which is low key one of my favorite things in the James Bond film. This is basically a PowerPoint presentation on steroids. He can only use this thing once because you can, you can only tell this, you know, plan once. And it is basically just we're going to go here and we're going to attack here. But he has built up these cute little models and stuff like that. It's really fun. Even when James Bond is incarcerated and not a lot of things happening, we still have so many you know, memorable moments, we have so much colorful characters that we don't really care. I also love the high energy chemistry between Pussy Galore and James Bond. It's also one of the few occasions where um, the Bond girl is actually older than James Bond is. So we have iconic moments, a great car chase in Switzerland, we have a fantastic villain and we're having one of the most iconic Bond girls of all time. Uh, and of course, you know, Q really finds his, you know, strive of, you know, having these wacky, uh, you know, gadgets with the ejector seats and all that stuff. The story about, you know, the Grand Slam operation and what Goldfinger is about isn't that important. The important thing of this movie is that we're entertained and we are. Maybe you can make the argument that setting this movie up in Kentucky isn't too exciting. It isn't as exciting as, let's say, Istanbul or uh, the Balkans in uh, From Russia with Love or uh, Jamaica in uh, Doctor No. But nevertheless, it is still a very fun uh, movie to do. By the way, Goldfinger, the book, is one of the few James Bond books I have actually read. And comparing it to the movie is kind of fascinating because you can see it is sort of the same story, but it is told in a you know much more slow-paced way, and it is not very exciting. But there are bits and pieces of it, especially when they're talking about the Grand Slam operation, which I felt was really fun. Um, there are also aspects of this book that is kind of huh? They're doing that. James Bond is actually quite a different character in the book, I think, than in the movie, especially you know when. Sean Connery was playing him. The mood and the character feels completely different. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty okay book, but I think it is one of the best James Bond films that ever, has ever been made. It is iconic, it has fantastic moments. Just look at the start of this movie where, you know, James Bond is blow up a cocaine factory, bang some chicks, kill some fools uh, by throwing a fan into a bathtub and say, shocking. I mean, how much more cool can you get? And the rest of the movie is fucking awesome. Goldfinger is, if you want to, the real gold standards of early James Bond films. It bags an easily 86 points. It really takes a lot of talent to have a movie with a Aston Martin with an ejector seat and you do not question it. It is simply fucking amazing. So I'll see you next time for Well So and So Reviewing. Well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.